everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and uh, yeah we've got a new setup today new angle yay so hopefully we'll be able to see things a little better now than the wonky angle I was at before so today we're going to talk about doing uh, heat burn on weapons so this is a really simple technique that can make weapons like this look really good as you see I'm doing some storm fiends here because I like filth and we're gonna take these machine guns that these guys have and we're gonna heat burn them out um, so what I've done so far is obviously I've painted a bunch of the miniature, but um, what I've done is some standard just, you know, uh, worked in some of the, our, our Vallejo metal color. I've used, uh, you know, three different colors, steel, dark, or sorry, gun metal, uh, dark aluminum, and pale burnt metal. Um, so that's where we are so far. And they look fine. Don't get me wrong. Like, those are perfectly fine guns. Nothing wrong. And we shaded the, the low parts. But... We want to take them up. So for that, we're going to use four things. So we're going to use, uh, and, and I have these four. You can use whatever four you want. The key with this is a brown, a purple, a blue, and a black. In that order. Okay? Now, you can use whatever you like. I prefer these. They're a little glossy. Um, they have a nice sheen to them. These three do. Um, the black, what it, the, the brown represents the thing that has gotten hot but not but it's just sort of burned a little the purple is old burn um, that has heated up more often the blue is where we have heated up the most and still have some heat probably residing and the black is actually where we've carbonized additional material onto the end of the barrel so it's four colors in that order so let's just get into it we're going to just do this gun real quick here so it's, it's a pretty simple and easy fast process so we're going to start by putting a little bit of this intensity chestnut uh, on the palette, you can see there, a little ink intensity chestnut. Um, and we're gonna get a wet brush. We're gonna draw some of that out. We're gonna wipe off some of the excess and then on the barrel here, we're just gonna take it and from about this point here, okay? So you can see about where I drew that line. You wanna make sure you don't have a lot of extra ink because you know, whatever you're using, we're just gonna draw it down. Just draw it down, draw it down. Very simple. I'm not going to do this little top piece here as far because it's a little more raised and separated. So I'm going to actually move it up a little bit. It's not actually the barrel, it's one step removed. So we draw it down. We're going toward where I want, I want, I don't want collection of the ink back here. So hence why my brush direction is always going this way, this way. All right, so what do we have now? We've got a little brown tint to our barrel, um, which is fine. We can do a second quick layer if we feel like we didn't, if it didn't go on well enough, that's all fine. You'll notice if you've already highlighted the barrel, it's gonna do some work for you in how intense the brown is. And that's, you know, good, that's what we want. Okay, step one done, easy peasy, right? All right, so now we clean off our brush. Next up is our Inktensity Intense Violet. Uh, you, again, you can use any purple you want. I happen to like this one. You find one that works for you. Um, if you don't have these colors, you could use, say, the shades from GW. You could mix in a little gloss medium or satin medium or something like that. Perfectly fine. Any of that will work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start up about right there okay and so now we're just going to take that part of the barrel and go purple and so we go purple and purple 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 pretty easy right everybody sees them down i'm actually going to water that just a little because that's a little heavier than i had actually wanted and that's what's cool about the inks they dry so slow if I water it down some, I can just smooth it out, and we're good to go. Okay, so we make sure we don't want to run. We don't want it to run all the way down in the shadows. If you if you shaded the the lower parts, you can just kind of leave those black, and use that to your advantage. Just wiping my brush a little there. Uh, 
push that around just a little. Sometimes you just gotta push paint around until it's in the right place. Okay, so now we've got brown and then purple. Very nice. We can already start to see that burn effect uh, showing up. Okay, so now we're gonna take our plasma fluid blue. Now I've still got a little bit of the steel on my palette, and there's a reason for that. Like I've still got a little bit of the pale burnt on my, this pale burn here on my palette, um, which was the highlight color. I'm actually gonna just take that, and rub that mostly off of my brush, okay? Okay, now what I wanna do is actually from about here, I just wanna very quickly go back in and bring back a little bit of that pale burnt. Now you can do this with the Vallejo metal color. This is harder with other metals because they don't actually uh, glaze well. With these Vallejo metal colors, you can glaze, which is one of the reasons they're amazing. Um, metals that you can glaze with are pretty sweet. Okay, the reason I did that is just to get a little more shine back to the barrel so that this blue really shows. Okay, now we're gonna take the blue, get a healthy amount of that on our brush, and we're gonna start about here, okay? And I'm just gonna go blue, and blue, and blue, and blue. You get what I'm doing here, right? This is, this is not magic. Basically, I am progressively darkening this barrel with each of these colors, covering slightly less every time, right? So now, what we've got is something like that, okay? And that looks pretty good. Now, if you wanna get a little fancy, okay, which we can, certainly, what we can do is we can take some of our chestnut and some of our purple we can kind of put those together. And we can just kind of go over the edge there and smooth that out in between the two. So we get a nice smooth transition. Because the heat would be passing out fairly evenly. It wouldn't have a hard line where it stopped. So now we get something like that. Pretty nice. Unfortunately, the blue is transparent enough it really shows that purple underneath, and that's why we did that quick pre-glaze, okay? So now we wanna let that dry completely. There's a little bit of extra paint there that I don't want to set up in a funny way. There we go, just kinda spread it out. Okay, so now we've got a night, you could stop there in all honesty. Um, like that's your, your heat effect, if you wanna show like a hot gun just firing and getting super hot, you can stop there. Or you can go the extra step. So the extra step is the end of the barrel is gonna collect carbon. It's where, because there's gonna be, uh, you know, residue, like gunpowder residue and other things coming out of the end of this barrel, right? Like when a, when a machine gun or something like this fires, stuff comes out. And that's gonna collect around the edge. So for that, we're, we want to actually have some mass. So we went to our Vallejo pigment. This is actually the carbon uh, black. So it's, it's meant to be carbon. Um, to put it on there, we're gonna just grab some matte medium. Um, you can also use matte varnish, you can use alcohol, you can use a lot of different things. Not really picky, you could even use a shade or a paint. All of that is possible. Doesn't really matter. You just need some kind of medium to um, some kind of medium to make the pigment stick. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna get a little bit of that medium on my brush, okay? And I'm gonna wipe most of it off. So what I've got is kind of a wet brush with a little medium. I'm using a crappy brush here. I switched to like a brush I really don't care about because you are gonna screw up a brush with pigment. And then the final thing I'm gonna do is just pigment the end of this barrel. I'm gonna kind of work that all in, going back into my medium every so often. And we wanna be very, very minimal with this. 
We want to make sure we get it down in the crevices where it would collect. Because we don't want to destroy all that wonderful blue. And there we go. It's pretty much that easy. So now we put on our little end char. We can work it in a little more if we want, or something like that. If you feel like a color is not right, you could go back. Like, if I wanted some more blue, you can see how much I've got there. If I felt like that wasn't enough, I could take some of the blue, wipe most of it off of my brush, and just very lightly away from the carbon, just kind of go over it. Just do a light, quick glaze. You know, and you can even out your colors until you get the right mix that you really like. But there you go. And so what you end up with is that right there, which is a really nice heated barrel. I think that looks pretty great. So, very simple. As I, let's, very quickly, four colors in order. Chestnut, any kind of uh, light brown like that. Uh, a purple, uh, I use violet here. Um, this is, you want a light blue. So here we have a, I'm using Badger Minotaur Ghost Tint Plasma Fluid, one of my favorite colors. And then a black char, uh, in this case, Vallejo Pigments uh, Carbon Black. And what you get is that right there. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, quick and simple as you can see, but with a great looking effect. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We're always planning more. Uh, give it a like if you like it. Uh, of course, sharing it with somebody is always the best thing you can do. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.